What's going on everybody? This is Andre here covering for Kevin on the Kevin Breeze channel and today we're going to be going over some tips and tricks and hidden features for the Motorola Moto G Play. Now the first thing I wanted to show you guys is a quick way to get to the settings on the home screen. Now if you want to update anything on the home screen whether it's the background, the widgets, or just some general settings, you can easily do this by going through the settings, scrolling through the menu, and finding the sections for the home screen, but there's a much faster way to do it. If you press one finger on the screen and hold it, it'll come up right here and then you can go through all the different settings that you might want to use to personalize the home screen even more. Here you can change everything from backgrounds to wallpapers, even the style of the home screen. And I think this is really cool. The customization you can do with this feature is really great. Ensure you can go to the menu and find it just as well, but being able to do it right from your home screen itself is really convenient and a lot of people don't know about it, so now you do. Now one section of the settings on this phone that has a great amount of hidden features that you can mess around with is the gestures section. To go here, you're gonna wanna swipe down, hit the gear right here, go to the search button and type gestures. Once you get to this section, there are a lot of different things that you can do to customize the functions of this phone and how you can perform certain actions. I think one of the most unique ones is the swipe to split option. This is really helpful with multitasking. So once you've enabled it, if you open an app and then quickly swipe back and forth on the screen, you'll be able to open this screen, which is basically a multitasking section. Once this is enabled, you're gonna be able to use two different apps at the same time without closing either of them. Normally, when you're on your home screen or any app that you might be using, if you double tap the power button, let's see what happens. So the Google Assistant opened. Now, Google Assistant is all well and good. A lot of people use it, some people don't. But if you're one of those people who doesn't use Google Assistant and you're not using that double tap feature for anything in that case, then you might be missing out. I'm gonna show you something else you can do with this power button if you don't use Google Assistant. So again, you're gonna to wanna to go to the gestures section and then hit double press power key. So by default, it's set to launch assistant. You can either disable it or you can use it to launch the camera. I always like to have as many easy ways to use the camera as possible. And when you're trying to do it fast, this is definitely a good option. Once you set it to launch the camera, all you need to do to open the camera, of course, is double tap the power button and it'll open right up. Now, the first time you do this, if you have multiple different apps that use the camera, it might show this message. But once you select the option, you can choose either one and then it'll open right up. Now, this might be a really useful feature to use a different app. If you use something like Snapchat a lot that also does have its own camera and is used primarily for taking photos and you have a quick moment that you want to capture really fast, then double tapping the power button would be a really easy way to open that up. But either way, it's really nice to have a different function with the double tap feature than just using the Google Assistant for people who don't normally use Google Assistant. When you're trying to take a screenshot, usually what you're going to do is press and hold the power button and the volume down button. That's easy enough, but there's also an even cooler way to do it. Again, we're gonna go to gestures and hit the three finger screenshot option. Once it's enabled, instead of pressing and holding the two external buttons, all you're gonna do is put three fingers on the screen, spread a little bit apart and hold it for a second. As you can see, it just took a screenshot. I think that's a really cool way to do it. And even though pressing and holding the volume down button and the power button isn't hard at all, I think the on-screen method is not only a little bit more convenient, but it's a lot cooler too. Now sometimes you might be in a situation where you need to turn on your flashlight really fast. You might be in the dark looking for something or whatever the case might be. Of course, the normal way to turn on the flashlight is to swipe down here and press this button and it'll turn on. But there's also an even cooler and easier way to do it. So once again, we're gonna to go to gestures and hit the fast flashlight button. So once it's enabled, all you need to do to turn on the flashlight is to do one quick motion and it'll be good to go. So right now it's off and it's on. I think it's a really great convenient way to use the flashlight and then to turn it off, you just do the same thing. Whether you're in the dark, say the power goes out or whatever the situation might be where you have to get the flashlight on fast, 
This is a great option and it's a lot more convenient than swiping down and pressing it manually. Now most people know that in order to see your notifications, you swipe down and they're all in this section. But what if I told you that you don't actually have to touch the screen to see your notifications? So once again, we're gonna go to gestures and right here it says swipe fingerprint for notifications. We're gonna turn this part on. And now instead of swiping down on the screen, you're actually gonna swipe your finger down on the fingerprint scanner. It is a little thing, but at the same time, it's really convenient if you wanna see your notifications without touching your screen, you can just do it in one quick motion. Now these days, most Android phones are gonna have this type of navigation. Although it's really nice and really easy to use, some people might prefer the older Android navigation with the three buttons instead. Let me show you how to get that. So you're gonna to go to settings, hit the search bar and type navigation. As you can see here, we are on gesture navigation right now. And to get those three buttons back, go ahead and hit three button navigation. Once that's on, you're gonna see the classic three buttons here, and then you're good to go. Now today's Android keyboard is really nice, but one thing a lot of people wish it had that it doesn't is a dedicated row for the numbers. Let me show you how to get that. So you're gonna hit the settings right here, go to preferences, and right here there's a number row that's currently off by default. You're gonna to wanna to hit this, and when you go back to the keyboard, it's gonna have a dedicated row for the numbers. You can also do a lot of other cool things with the keyboard setting. For example, you can change the theme of the keyboard and you can even download new themes. Have you ever been in a situation where you're trying to show somebody a video or something like that and the screen just falls asleep on you? That's super annoying, isn't it? Well, I'm gonna show you how to avoid that. So once again, you're gonna wanna go to settings, go to display, Hit advanced, and then right here it says screen timeout. Now I have mine set to 30 minutes. You can set it to whatever you want. On one hand, if it's too short, the screen's gonna fall asleep on you all the time. And I know from experience that is super annoying, especially when you're trying to read something or show someone something, it's just not convenient. Now on the other hand, if you have it set to too long and don't always pay attention to your phone, then leaving that screen on for long periods of time could potentially drain your battery a lot faster. So you're gonna wanna play around with it and see which one is right for you. Another thing that you can do on the display settings is turn on dark mode. Now, if you're ever in a situation where you don't wanna get notifications, you can always go on do not disturb mode, but let me show you an even faster and more convenient way to turn it on. So go to settings here, hit the search bar, and type flip for do not disturb right here. And once this is enabled, instead of going to your settings to turn on do not disturb, all you need to do is put your phone face down. You're gonna hear it vibrate, and once it does, you know that do not disturb mode is on, and as long as it is on and face down like this, you're not gonna get any notifications. If you're doing something where you don't wanna get notifications, if you're busy, or just wanna have some peace and quiet for a little while, you can always do this, and as soon as you pick your phone up normally, you're gonna feel it vibrate again, and do not disturb mode will be off. Now the last thing I wanna talk about is the battery. So as you can see right now, the battery bar is there, which is great, but you can't see the percentage unless you swipe it down like this. Let me show you how to get the battery percentage on here. So you're gonna to go to settings, hit battery, and right here where it says battery percentage, you're gonna to wanna to turn that on. And once you do, it'll show the percentage right here. With the percentage on, you'll have a better idea of how much charge you actually have in your phone. Another cool thing you can do in the battery settings is go to the usage details. If you're running out of battery fast and you don't know why, this is a really useful way to actually find out how you're using your battery. Another really cool feature that goes along with this is the adaptive battery. This feature helps regulate how much power the phone uses on certain apps that you don't use often. It's just another way to increase the battery life and overall performance of the phone. And finally, we have battery saver mode. Now, if you're ever in a situation where you're really running low on battery and don't have a chance to plug the phone in right then, you can always turn on battery saver mode. 
This is gonna put the phone into a low power mode that runs the phone as efficiently as possible so you can save battery until you can plug it in. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video for tips, tricks, and hidden features for the Motorola Moto G Play. If you did, definitely be sure to leave a like and subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one.